Okay, it is 637 and I'm getting ready to start the upgrade to 3.0. I'm going to open autoplay and run the setup. I accept the license terms. So I just uninstalled the Windows Home Server connector. So now what I'm going to do is shut down the system, restart, and while it's restarting, while the status light, which is the one that looks like the little squiggly line, is flashing from blue to red, I'm going to push down the button once so it can go through. Okay, so I will push the power button. It's now starting up and flashing. Push the button with the paper clip, makes a funny little click, and I should be good to go. I've now completed these steps, click on next, and now it will search for the server. I have a second server running, which I shut down just prior to this, so it should be able to discover the EX485 and start with a 3.0 upgrade. Okay, I've now found the server. I'm going to click on Next. Now, you have a difference between server recovery and factory reset. Server recovery will just allow you to recover the server portion of your drives, which means basically the operating system. A factory reset will reset everything, so you do not want to do a factory reset. Server recovery, click on Next. Server recovery, now I'm going to lose my add-ins, I'm going to lose all of my settings and things like that, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I'll go back and do those later on. I've done them enough times. Um, but we will have to go through and redo all of the information, including the server startup, which was the blue screen and at names and users and everything else. So we'll go through, and now it's going to start the process. Again, we started this at 6.37. It's now 6.43, and we'll see how we do on the timer. Okay, the recovery portion is complete. Now, this does not include the setup of the actual server, but the recovery portion is complete at 6.52. Click on Next, and then click on Finish. And it'll take a couple of times of rebooting in five minutes or so, probably longer, for this to go through the next step. So I'll let it run and see how we do. Again, 6.52, it's been 15 minutes since we started, and the recovery portion is complete. Okay, 6.58, it's rebooted a couple of times. Now it's going to find my home server. You can see it's downloading, and it's called HP Storage now. Okay, I'm getting an error here. Um, Andrew had talked about this prior in his article, talking about some of his experiences that it couldn't be found. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back clicking on the bat button, and let it go through and find it again. When I had originally done this, it had taken a couple of times of going back and forth to get it to find it and to download the data. So you may have to do it once or twice as you go through here. It's now downloading the second time. So first, I had an error, clicked on back, and then I redid it again. So not too bad. I was expecting more than a couple of errors as we went through this the first time. Now it's installing. You can see it says MediaSmart Server 3.0 Update 1. So this is good. I accept the terms, whatever they may be. And now it's going to go through and do the Install Shield Wizard. 
We're at 7 o'clock now, so we've been doing this 23 minutes. Not too bad. I'm running currently right now a gigabit network, so the PC that I'm on has got gigabit through the D-Link router and switches to the MediaSmart server, which is also gigabit. You can see the HP MediaSmart server icon is now shown up on my desktop. And it's proceeding through the installation process. Click on Next. This is installing the connector. Yes, I want to wake the computer up. Okay, now it goes through and it will guide us through the setup process.